Now, I believe you didn't have any formal vocal training as a youngster. How did you discover you had this mighty voice? Oh, God, I've been singing since I was like two and a half or three. I was entertaining from the crib. I used to sing, oh, gosh, what did I sing? Good Night, Irene, an old Woody Guthrie song. And I knew like five verses before I was three. So I, I've been singing and singing and dancing and being a little entertainer since I was just a wee little kid. Can you remember a time when it got uh, that serious that you, it began to become obvious to you that you wanted to sing for a living? Oh, yeah, when I was about second grade. I would always want to perform in school stuff, and, um, and I started singing professionally when I was about 11. Sat in with some band at a, you know, an armory, like a Grange Hall, and at schools and stuff like that, and colleges, and I've been singing ever since. Haven't stopped once. Were you always a confident performer? You never went through that initial stage fright? No, I never got stage fright. I just could hardly wait. It's great fun. I mean, it's just one feeling. And how did you work as a session singer come about? When, when was your first professional engagement yeah. Um, my first was a demo that I was putting out, a demonstration. I lived in Washington State, and I went with my band that I was with for about five years called The Unusuals, and we went to San Francisco and saved our money and did a, a demo, a song called It Looks Like the Summer is Over. It was an old Dusty Springfield song, and we recorded that, and uh, Bobby Shad from the old Payola days, my God, I uh, was with uh, was Mainstream Records. I think Big Brother and the Holding Company were on that, the first album. Yeah, it was Mainstream Records. And they they wanted to release it. Of course, it was a huge rip-off, but we got some airplay and, you know, started the ball rolling. I'm getting used to getting ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. Summer